Hey, everybody good. That's yeah. the whole league. Everybody mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You make it to the league, you good. You good. In some capacity. No. People be underestimating that shit. Mm -hmm. But they got that, uh, you watch like a lot of YouTube shit. They got like, like all the, I don't even know how you would say it, like low low budget NBA players. Like people you <laughs> only know if you a die hard fan. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Like you. when they go to the gym and they find people who be talking Yo, shit in the comments and bust their ass. What's the, uh, the white boy that used to play for the Celtics? And Scalabrine. Green, yeah, they call him the white mama. And people like, oh, he only averaged two minutes a game. He sucks. Now this dude went into a gym and wiped the floor with everybody. Everybody like, in there. Like he looked like Jordan. He got a cold <laughs> following though. Yeah, he does. He does. Like. It's a lot of dudes like that in the NBA, though. Like, you Just, go, you know, fan favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fan favorites, and then it's like, the if you're a basketball nerd, it's like, yeah, this this is my guy, but he only averaged like 15 minutes a game, like, like. Old boy, like from the Celtics, that just got hurt, wasn't it? Robert Williams. Yeah. Like he was nice this year before he got hurt. Yeah. Now, everybody know LeBron and KD and Giannis. Of course. But, yeah, everybody know them, but. So. It's a cold world, man. It's a cold world. I know man. sports is your forte. Mm, I try, you know. That's how you got into all this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I learned very quickly. I was not going to be an athlete. I learned very quickly I was not going to be Michael Jordan. Man, it took me a while uh, after, before I gave up on my athlete dreams. I got hit one day, though, at football practice. I was like, I'm, too, I'm good at other stuff. See, I always wanted to play football, and it's going to sound dumb as shit, because it is. I was always afraid of like getting hit, and then I wouldn't be able to get my helmet off because I'm claustrophobic. What? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was the dumbest thing in the world. My mom always asked me, because I grew up in a football family. My, my grandfather was a football coach. She was like, Justin, why ain't you never want to play football? I was scared of the helmet. I was like claustrophobic, and that was the only reason. Then I was like, oh, this shit really just come off like that. I never yeah. played football because I always played basketball. So. Man, you missed some great fun. Man, I did. Fo I did. Football is where you find out who really a bitch at school. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, I, I remember coming up in high school, like, my school had, like, this big rivalry with Petersburg High School. I went to this school called Matoka. And like, we would all be, we would see each other at the mall every weekend and, right. you know, at the arcade and whatnot. And then sometimes fights would happen at the mall and be like, oh, yeah, we got y'all next Friday. We're going to whoop y'all ass. We're going to whoop y'all ass. You would really see who would who would be fighting and who would be like, you know what, nah, I'ma chill because I ain't trying to I ain't trying to go across the middle on this dude. Oh man, that's that was the most fun. Oh man, look, you get caught across the middle. Yeah, especially when you catch the ball and then you truck the motherfucker who trying to hit you, like, cause they whole objective mm -hmm. is to hit you while they while you not looking. Oh yeah. So it makes it look like. Oh yeah. It's way more. You impactful would. than it is, but if you like, every team got that one motherfucker mm -hmm. on there that's built like that. Oh, yeah. That can't nobody hit, can't nobody. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, that long as you identify who that is early, yeah. But it can happen at any moment. It can happen at any moment, it can happen to anybody. Like, my, my boys would tell me all the time, like, this happened after high school, but it was like, everybody want that one hit, especially if you a linebacker or a safety or something like that. You remember when um, Sean Taylor almost killed the punter in the Pro Bowl? Yeah. Like, everybody wants that hit. Yeah. Because, I mean, now you can't really hit like that no more because the game has changed. But, like, nah, like, my boy told me one time he got hit so hard running across the middle, he was, like, tense. I thought I was being born again. I ain't know where I was. Like, because he looked up. It was a night game, and all he saw was just, like, a white light. He was like, huh. This is either the end or this is the beginning. Right. I don't know which one it is, but I have no clue. He was like, I ain't know where I was for the next three quarters. He wow. still played, which is probably right. which is an issue, but you know, yeah, you Cold find out call. who's a bitch and who's Yeah, you definitely yeah. find out what they made up. For sure. But 
It's a gladiator sport. What, what position you play? I played like corner and safety and nickel and shit like that. Oh, so that, that I was I was just playing any position really. I knew it. That's why you're so good at talking shit, cause you was a DB. Yeah, I was and, talking shit yeah. whatever. Like yeah. I would be on the <laughs> I would be on the scout team talking shit. Hey, as you should. Keep it keep the same energy Man, at all times. I just had to be doing something, mm -hmm. bro. Like Cause look, you may run by me, but you ain't gonna like out joke me. Like right. I'm gonna I'm get under your skin somehow, some way. Right. So, and however I'm coming, I'm coming like that every time. Exactly. They are gonna know that. Yeah. You gotta earn your respect, bro. Yeah. You talking about like blindside hits? Mm -hmm. That's where you really. That's where people like the dirty shit. Mm -hmm. That's where it's really you can really put your name out there. What would be going through your mind right before a blindside hit? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, we're talking about, we playing like safety or some shit. Yeah. And you see them coming on the post and they just looking inside. I'm just, I'm lining that shit straight up. <laughs> I'm talking about a, a textbook tackle. Straight across the body. Right, I'm going right there. Like, you see this yeah. pose? Like, you yeah. gotta hit, like, right there. I'm getting my angle together. You trying to hit, like, lead yes, with this show? Because I'm <laughs> trying to put some pad in it, too, because uh -huh. I want it to be loud. Yeah. So it's gonna be like, damn! So you said. You said it took a minute for you to uh, realize, like, all right, well, I ain't going to Oh, UGA. you that day? Yeah, what, what was that day? We was like, oh, you know man. what? I got to retire. It was it was actually, this is the thing about playing football. When you go from ninth grade to 10th grade, that's like from ninth grade, grade football to varsity. Mm -hmm. But you start varsity football at the end of ninth grade. Yep, yep. So it's like the game a little faster. It's a lot faster. <laughs> These motherfuckers been working out three years straight. They on creatine mm -hmm. and everything. So one day I was playing corner on this side, right? I was playing front left corner. And the quarterback did an option where he came out, mm -hmm. faked the pass, and took off running the other way. Ah, right, damn. The other side. So as I'm coming across the field, yeah. the fucking tight end is coming across the field also. I'm looking at the quarterback. Oh, God. <laughs> Man, the fucking tight end hit me and broke the whole, all the snaps on the God. side of my helmet. <laughs> Sending it in flying. I was like... <laughs> he was like, well, Oosh. I had a good run. And then I got up and the coach was like... Are you okay? You right? You know where you are? I had a big clump of dirt <laughs> in my helmet. He, he crashed the shit out of me on that one. Man. That was the one day I was like... This ain't it, bro. Man, for me, in basketball, you remember it was like, my my basketball career ended early. I knew I was like, all right, I, I, I got a much better chance to be Stuart Scott than Michael Jordan after this. So you remember it was like 97, mm. when Jordan had the the Everybody the, the played flu basketball in 97. Yeah, everybody did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, everybody and, played. And, you know, Jordan had the, the flu game. Yeah. I put flu game because, I ain't never known a person to catch the flu in June. Yeah, he was I, just drunk. I thoroughly believe it was the hangover he game. Was dope, and to be man. quite honest with you, that's not a knock on Mike. I think it's even more impressive. If you did it drunk, fuck yeah. the flu. Yeah, like, he gonna come. I mean, you, he might catch wind at this and be like, <laughs> I ain't <I'm> drunk. <laughs> you you ain't catching wind drunk. He was on that tequila. <laughs> Look, man, Vegas was a 45 minute flight from the Salt Lake City. The crazy part is Scotty probably drunk more than him that night. Dennis he drank more than all of them. He wasn't even the one. He just didn't eat. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> hey, you're trying to blame it was bad pizza. Like, no, nah. what? I, look, I know them yellow eyes, Mike. Exactly. You ain't getting yellow eyes nah. from pizza. And he was like, smoking cigars all mm -hmm. night, too. Look, I get it. And look, Jalen Rose has, has subscribed to this theory as well, so I'm not alone in this. We are not alone. We are a party of three. It was the hangover game, and that was more impressive than the flu. Hey, man, you heard it here first. Mike was drunk. We gonna put it out. He ain't gonna do shit to us. <laughs> drunk <Look>. ass. <laughs> yeah, look. you tricked us as kids. We thought you was the GOAT. Look. But now you really the GOAT because you did it you, drunk. You really the GOAT because you did it drunk. It was drunk. one of them drunks where you can't come down. You got to keep drinking. You got to you, you gotta keep going because yeah. the moment you stop, and look, to Mike's credit, he dropped 40 that game. He, he dropped 40 drunk. in a must-win game on the road. It's drunk. Tied 2-2. This how so, you know he was drunk, because he hugged Scotty. <laughs> then after watching the documentary, <laughs> he didn't even fuck with Scotty like that. Boy, that boy, that documentary had people pissed. The same way the whole winning time joint got people pissed now. Yeah. Yeah, like... They telling the truth on this look, shit. Look, man, I... Look, that joint is mad entertaining to me. Yeah. I'll be watching, I'm like... I get it. It's TV. It's a dramatization. 
And I get it, Jerry West. You don't the like it. The thing about it is they didn't put enough in there. That's no. the thing. Mm -hmm. It's too specific. You yeah, couldn't nah. put all the shit. Nah, nah. You, you can't put it all in there. And it's already got renewed for a season two. So there's a lot of people watching that joint. And look, Kareem See, they, hate it. Now they pick, they picked the right team, though, because it's like, oh, yeah. They got the Showtime Lakers. Yeah. Think of the team that was terrible that year, the shit they had going on. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> that's the documentary you want to yeah, see. The, the 1980 Detroit Pistons yeah, before yeah. Isaiah Thomas and all yeah, them. Yeah. 84 <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> the, the 95 Vancouver Grizzlies. They, were, they man. Yeah, they nah. were doing ecstasy at halftime. <laughs> look, you remember? They drafted uh, Big Country. Dog, Big Country. <laughs> was the franchise? <laughs> big Country. At least the jerseys was fire. The jer but no, nah, you remember uh, what was his name? Artest was he said it himself. He used to drink Hennessy at halftime. I believe him. And I believe every single syllable. Twenty pounds just from not drinking. Damn. He did look what well Artest, that's that's another one they could do a a, a mini series on. Like yeah. so. But yeah, nah. That flu game, that flu game drunk, game. drunk game had me believing. I was like, you know what? I I, I drink Gatorade, I I'm eat Wheaties. Right now. Look, look. I, I, look, they told me I could be like Mike if I do this. Mike played with the flu. God damn it, I'm gonna play with the flu. <laughs> so, my brother and I, we shared a room growing up. And I'm like, yo, aunt, don't tell mom. I'm cutting the fan on and I'm cracking the window. He was like, but it's, it's like 30 degrees outside. But like, nah, I need to be sick so I can play like Mike. I got sick. I got benched the entire second half. I ain't sniffed 40 points. I was like 0 of 8. I ain't even hit the rim. I was turning the ball over. And my mom was like, Why, how'd you get so sick? I ain't say anything. My brother did. You just ain't that smart. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah, because you thought you'd get claustrophobia wearing a helmet. Yeah, you, I did. You I tried did. to get the flu. Yeah, to play like Mike. <laughs> I, I, I like to think that I've wisened up a little bit over the last 25 years. I mean, years. you know what? Let me start this shit now. Black Party is over. <laughs> I can't believe you for it. Was... Hey, man, look. It's, it's a safe space. I'm just being open and honest. It's like, it ain't gonna always... You know, work in my favor. But. Hey, man, the black market is open, okay? And you do not need the flu to be great at nothing. <laughs> Let me check my side notes, man. I got, I got some info about you over okay. here. Okay, all right. Let me see. Well, well, I do know this is your second book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the second one I co-wrote. Well, I wrote uh, Dwayne Wade's photographic memoir that came out last year. The photographic memoir. Yeah, but for those of you who don't know, got my man Justin Tinsley in here with us today. World-renowned author, commentator. Hey, look, he called writer. me world-renowned, so I'm world-renowned. World That's this going goes on my LinkedIn. Out to the whole world. Yeah, this, this is going on my LinkedIn. Yeah, <laughs> world-renowned. Yeah, world-renowned. They saying a lot of good things about you. Hey, look, I, I'm trying to keep it that way. Plus, you're doing it for the culture, man. You're doing. It's all a dream. You got a whole biography right here. Yeah, definitely need that. Yeah, man. Catch like, us up, man. How did you, how, what? How did you get here? Bro, like, what was the start? The crazy thing is, I'm almost a deleted email away from not sitting on this uh, on this couch with you because it's like fall 2019, and I'm just deleting emails, like spam emails and shit. I get one, and the subject line says, Biggie Small's biography, you know, interests or something like that. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, And come to find out, it was from the guy who eventually became my editor on the book. His name is Jameson, and he works at Abrams Books out of Manhattan. And he was like, yo, I'm looking to commission somebody to write a book on Biggie um, ahead of what would have been, you know, his 50th birthday next month, May 2022. And um, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. He was like, would you, would you want to write it? And I'm like, it seems odd because everything I knew about the process is you. I come to you with an idea and you either green light it or, or pass on it. And I, I wrote up a quick pitch and it was like, yeah, we want you to write the book. Uh, Signed a contract in like January 2020, and I'm like, Get ah, that deposit shit. money. Mm hmm. That check cleared. That was the biggest <laughs> check I ever had in my life, at, at least at one time. You know, 
And I was like, ah, man, this shit is lit. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna go to New York. I'm gonna chill in Brooklyn for a couple of weeks. I'm gonna go to Atlanta, cause you know, he had he had um, ties down here. I'm gonna go to LA, he had ties out there. I'm gonna just travel the country, just writing a book. Like, oh man, this is like a dream. Then March 2020 happened. Okay. And I'm like, you know. I know what happened yeah, in March. Yeah, we, we all know what happened with March. And for, to make a long story short, I just basically had to do all my research, all my interviews via Zoom. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, and I was just like, it, it was daunting at first, to be honest with you, Los. Like, it's Biggie Smalls. Like, right, right. it ain't exactly some unknown musician. Like, everybody know Biggie Smalls. And I'm like, what the hell can I say new about this dude that would make people want to read it? And I ain't gonna lie to you, there was plenty of nights where I would just be like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, I gotta write 100,000 words on this. And like, this shit probably gonna suck. Like, I don't, I don't know, but- yeah, it, doubt kicked in. Yeah, that, that doubt, man, like, doubt is crippling. Yeah. And you, like, and if you allow yourself to stay in there, it, it could, it could ruin your entire career. It can mess up personal relationships. It can mess up bags. And I'm like, nah, I like getting the bag. So let me figure out a way to get myself out of this. And I did. And I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely pleased with the, the final product of it, man. I think a, I think people are going to read it. And, and it's not just, you know, sold some drugs, made some great music, beef with Tupac, and then died in a tragic manner. Like, sure, yeah. A lot parts, of life happened in between. Yeah, that, dog, like, to talk about, to tell a story about somebody's life, you just can't talk about their life. You know what I mean? It ain't just like he just jumped off a stoop and sold drugs as like a 14, 15 year old kid in Brooklyn. It's like, this dude was born into a war that he didn't even know existed, which was the war on drugs. And like, so we go back to like Richard Nixon pass, passing legislation that made it easier to imprison people for like 15, 20 years for a small amount of drugs and like, all of these things played into, played into like who Christopher Wallace was and who who Biggie eventually became. So, I try to focus more on that than opposed to just the the salacious or the the sexy headlines because they're in there. But it's far more than that. Mm. Yeah. So, that's dope, man. Yeah, what man. What does it feel like seeing it in the physical form at this point, bro? So, this ain't funny, but it is. So. And like September of last year, they started sending me like the early versions of it. It was like paperback. And so they sent me like 10 copies in like a box. And like whoever it was, FedEx, Amazon, I can't remember who it was. Uh, they dropped it off on my porch. And I was in a meeting and my wife, she was, she was taking a shower. And like, so we got like the security cameras like on our doorbells so you can see who's there. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, my books came. So she opened the door and she was like, I don't see a box here. I'm like, I just saw him drop the box off. Bro, we look on the camera. We live in a, in a, in a transitioning neighborhood, nice people there. Dude came and took the whole box. Took the whole box, I don't know what, he, I don't know if he thought it was like some shoes in there or if it was like a gaming system. I ain't know who it was, so I go across the street to my man, so he'd been living in the neighborhood for years. He was like, yo, let me see the video. He showed me the video, and five minutes later, I get a knock on my door, and I show the video to another person, and they tell me who it is. Them books was gone. He threw them books away because I, I, I was, he was somebody who used to live in the neighborhood, and obviously he had fallen on hard times, and. He's a, he's a guy that like, he just tries to make money however he can. And so, you know, I was, I was pissed about it at first. I was like, damn, man, he got a chance to hold my book before I did. But I started to learn about like his backstory and I'm like, well, damn, man, I, whatever his intentions were, I, I hope he's all right. You ought to write a book about his book still in there. Yeah, 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 I, you know. I, and then like, have him deliver it, and then when yeah, you see it, and yeah. he Yeah, he was like, a book? <laughs> he was like, books? So this what y'all think about me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna call it September, whatever day it was. Like, yeah, put his name on there and be like, book still in there. Yeah, I, I should have I should have thanked him in the liner notes. But uh, yeah, so it to hold it, like it's one thing to see it like in a Google Doc. It's another thing to, you know, see it, uh, see it come back from the editor with all the edits.
But it's another thing to like hold it in your hand. I, I, I would imagine it's like if you're an artist and you are working on your debut album and especially back during the days when it was like cassettes and CDs, you could actually hold it. That's what I would imagine is the closest feeling to because it's something that, especially your debut album, like you spit, you live your entire life right. creating that. And although this isn't my life, I put a definitely, I put a lot of my life into it because I got memories of Big going as far back when I was like in, what, second, third grade, you know, sneaking and listening to like the unedited version of Ready to Die and, you know, singing One More Chance. And my mom was like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, none. Exactly. And you know, you know, you just got memories to it. And we're all, per especially within rap and in this culture, man, like, we're all deeply connected to it because we all got memories to it. We all got like, yo, I remember where I was in life when this song came out. I remember walking into a party in high school and, you know, the girl I wanted to dance with, you know, I, I danced with her to, to this song. So like, music is way more than just sounds over a beat, man. It's just like, it's like part of the best music is part of your soul on wax. Mm -hmm. And that's, I hope this is what this book is for, for a lot of people as well. Where can they pick it up? Man, you can pick it up anywhere books are sold, including the dude who stole my early copies of my book, if you ever, if you ever know where he is. You he know, around the neighborhood. He, he run, I haven't seen him since, but they Cause say- Because he know he wrong. Mm-hmm, he know he wrong. You had to run up on him like, yo, I need them books, man. <laughs> I need them. He was, he was probably pissed when he started with books, too. He was. He like, was. Yeah, yeah, he was like, books? Book, anyways. Can't sell no damn books. <laughs> right. I can't sell, especially not these. Fuck this. <laughs> right. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> um, but no, you can get it anywhere, like Amazon, Books a Million, uh, black-owned bookstores. I've been trying to push those a lot. Um, we know a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm trying to push it to all of those, and just. Like, it, 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 I tell a couple of my homeboys hit me up. They was like, yo, Justin, like, we want to support, but, uh, bro, I ain't read a book since high school. And I was like, don't worry about it. They got audio books for that now. They read to you. No, nah, <laughs> read the damn book. <laughs> Look, I, I don't care. I don't care, just pre-order it. Yeah. <laughs> pre-order it. Sit it on the coffee table. And yeah, stuff. look, do what you got to do. Like, it, it, it ain't going nowhere, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. My man, hey, world renowned artist. You heard it. Get the book. I'm taking this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm keeping this one, so I ain't gotta wait. <laughs> nah, that's yours, man. Is the illest. Mm -hmm. What's your social media, man? man What's your next project you got coming up? You are you in the book game now? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I haven't haven't decided what the second book is gonna be. I'm on a two book contract with, yeah. with, with, with my current publisher, so it's just it's a matter of uh, thinking about what I wanted to be. I know. I, I would, I would love to. I just shouted my man out with, with his AI shirt. Like you talk about a book, I would love to write. I would love to write Allen Iverson's autobiography. I'm about to get with you. I got a book idea. I hey, let's do. do it. Let's do it, man. No, what y'all got going on here? And I'm not even just saying it because I'm sitting on this set right now. Like this shit is mad important. Like I, I, it. I look at this as like the same way my mom and grandma looked at Oprah every day at oh, 4 o'clock. Oh, shit. We done got up there. Yeah. All yeah. black Oprah stats. Yeah. Nah, this shit is that important, man, and I love everything that y'all got going on. Y'all are so important, man. It, t to sit on this couch, I mean, this, like, the third most popular couch. It's like Martin's couch, and then it's the couch from season one of The Wire. <laughs> that's that's how important it is to me. And I'm, I, I told Promise you, we you. over at the third spot. Yeah, see, see, see? <laughs> we, we safe. As long as we stay top three, we good. Look, man, y'all are important, man, and y'all just highlighting just so many parts of, uh, of our community, whether it's, you know, entrepreneurs, whether it's authors, whether it's, you know, whatever, the educators. Like, y'all give people a platform that honestly otherwise really wouldn't have to be themselves, right. you know, because we can go other places and try to get promotion, but like, man, we spent the first, what, five, six minutes talking about truck sticking people in, in football. Exactly. Like, I can't I can't do that everywhere. Like, nah, man, and that's what this whole platform is about, man. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. getting some exposure inside of our community and letting people take to what they want to take to, just to let them know there's more options of us out there. Look, and we, 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 
greatly appreciate y'all. So thank you for real, man. Hey, man, anytime you got anything going on, stop through the black market. Hey, you already know. 85 South, Justin Tinsley. The black market is open. <laughs> Let's get a photo. Hold them up, man. Three, two, one. Strong black granddaddy liquor. <laughs> Hell yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate you, you, boss. No problem.